Edit that. Now I'm going to roll right into the next video, kind of. This is, since we just went over the rescission, I think it's kind of, we can go to the website and I'm going to go revisit something that I talked about before because I'm hoping to have the time to revisit this personally. And this is the constitutional challenge to a statute. Or, or an ordinance or whatever so we go back under the criminal remedy as you see here then we're gonna go into the access of where the premium members have access see where I am right here and then I'm gonna go down here so we can review this document one more time which I have made a modification to it just to make it more clearer easily understood and read I uh, hear it. <clears throat> excuse me, here it is up here. Constitutional challenge or challenge the constitutionality. And that's basically the uh, rule 5.1 constitutional challenge. So Google Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 5.1. And the idea is that you challenge the constitutionality of a statute or a code that someone is charging against you. You know, you qualify whether or not what is being charged is constitutional and apparently if I remember correctly a ruling is not supposed to be made in that case until a response comes from the Attorney General so this is a, a chess piece for you and we've talked about this before there's an older video this is a more updated video I'm just gonna read through this document because just as I was telling you in the last video I'm getting to the point where I'm trying to make everything one page clean concise to the point so there's really nothing to dance around and if you really comprehend and understand the content this would be enough to get your foot in the door and everything else you just have to do in real time and entertain it so I pose three constitutional questions is it constitutional to bond the man as a surety to payment and performance under commercial contracts of attachment such as California Health and Safety Code subsection 11360 without his voluntary and mutual consent is such oppression not a violation of man's unalienable right to happiness liberty safety and privacy as knowledge as acknowledged in article 1 section 1 of the California Constitution All right so it's plain as day I'm basically saying if you're gonna bond a man as surety force him to perform under a commercial contract without his voluntary free will and mutual consent is that not a violation of his unalienable right to happiness liberty safety privacy acknowledge you know so notice how I pose this question and I already concluded some facts in the question one of those facts being that um, this man in this or myself or whoever in this contract is being forced into an agreement that is other than law I already took the position that this is not law this is just some private contract why because I already addressed whether it's law in a different constitutional question second constitutional question is there any proof that health and safety code subsection 11 360 was enacted into positive law in accordance with the provisions of article Four, section 8 of the California Constitution governing the enactment of positive law in your response please consider that forcing contracts without consent that create financial undertakings imposes enslavement on the man and impairs his right to reject accept or to accept or reject contracts freely without such evidence that the prima facie code has been enacted into law wouldn't the enforcement of such policy be forbidden under Article 2, Section 9 of the California Constitution? Forbids the state from passing any law impairing obligations of contracts? Notice of Constitutional Question 3. In accordance with the California Constitution, does bonding the private man into a forced contract under the color of California Health and Safety Code, Subsection 11360, violate the provisions of Article 1, Section 6 of the California Constitution's prohibition against slavery wherein it states involuntary servitude is prohibited except to punish a crime I challenge the presumption that health and safety 
Health and Safety Code, subsection 11360, identifies any actual crime or the provisions of the code include the proper elements of a crime according to the law. And then we have a little memorandum. And this probably should be first. We're talking about the corpus delecti, the body of the crime, because it follows up right here. But it says, for the purposes of a criminal prosecution under subsection 241 and 1584, the term involuntary servitude necessarily means a condition of servitude in which the victim is forced to work for the defendant by use or threat of physical restraint or physical injury or by use or threat of coercion through the law or legal process. This definition encompasses cases in which the defendant holds the victim in servitude by placing him or her in fear of such physical strength or injury or legal coercion. That's the United States versus somebody. In every criminal trial, the prosecution must you know, uh, prove the corpus delecti, the body of the crime itself, the fact of injury or loss or harm, or, or excuse me, or loss or harm. The existence of criminal agency as its cause. So you can go deeper into corpus delecti and basically you have to understand that for a crime to exist there must be an injured party. And if you're a living man you can't be charged with a crime uh, against a non-living man unless it was a crime against property but there still has to be an injured party someone to make the claim. So you can you can kind of go dig in and go further in on the corpus delecti matter but it's there for you to study. Then we have silence can only be equated with fraud when there is a legal and moral duty to speak or when an inquiry left unanswered would intentionally be misleading. We cannot condone. So anyway, that's another case law down there. Now, this is also I, I, I kind of just went right on into this video because it is an excellent tool to use in conjunction with the withdrawal or rescission of signature. You can think of it many different ways to compile and put these things together so anyways thank you for watching if you're interested in uh, the outline blueprint for status correction shoot me an email coaching at thctrust.org